esters of 4 hydro. Question 9. Parabens are used as preservatives in cosmetics, pharmaceutical products and foods. Parabens are esters of 4 hydroxybenzoic acid. One common paraben used as a food preservative is ethylparaben, and you're given a structural formula. Okay, um, ethylparaben is a, sorry, is an aromatic compound containing both sigma and pi bonds. Write the molecular formula for ethylparaben. Okay, let me just go up a little bit so we can see this. This is all about counting the carbons carefully and probably the hydrogens as well. So carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, hydrogens. Different colour. Okay, so one down here. Two, three, four, five, not here. Five and six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And oxygens are clearly there, they're not an issue. So our overall formula is C, C9, H10, O3. Okay. State the type of hybridization which is adopted by the carbon atoms in the aromatic ring. Pretty much just need to know this. This is sp2. Okay, the reason it's sp2 is if you look at each of these carbons in the ring, each carbon is attached to two carbons and it's also, if we just went for a straight benzene ring, it is also attached to one hydrogen. So each carbon has three identical bonds. And so for us to get that, considering we can only work, we always work with an S, and then I need two Ps to give me my three, hence the SP2. Okay. Describe how pi bonds form. A little bit of a gift. Because you can just say edge on overlap of orbitals and you're done. Um, it does say in the mark scheme, and I quite like that they're, they're allowing you to do this. You might want to do a little picture um, where you're showing that you've got edge on here rather than end on. Okay. Another preservative is sodium 4 hydroxybenzoate. It can be prepared by refluxing uh, with sodium hydroxide. Complete the diagram to show how the reaction mix is heated under reflux. Okay, so under reflux means that up here, I need to have something which prevents the liquids or the evaporated liquids from escaping. So what I need is a condenser basically. Okay, so um, you can draw a very nice diagram. Mine's probably going to be a little bit dodgy. Um, so we have a tube coming up from here and then we need the condenser around the outside. So your kind of condenser jacket. Um, anything which you've put on, as long as you label it clearly, you're good. Um, so we've just got condenser here. And then you're fine. So any, any gas that comes up here is cooled down and just drops back down as a liquid. Use a ruler, make it neat. At the start of the reaction, two layers were observed in the reaction mixture. Explain why only one layer was observed when the reaction was complete. Okay, well, you could go with actually what they put last in the in the mark scheme, but I thought was probably the most obvious one. You've got only product left. You know, so if you've only got product presence, present, I was going to say presence, uh, present there, then it would only be one layer. Or you could have to say, you could say that the reactant's no longer present. Or we could go with the really posh one, which is actually the first one they've put in the mark scheme, which is that the product is miscible. I.e. it dissolves, it mixes freely, and therefore you can't see it because it is completely mixed through, no longer forming layers. Okay. Explain fully why a salt solution of the salt sodium 4 hydroxybenzoate has a pH greater than 7 for two marks. That's not a nice question. Okay. So you can go back up here. If we go back up here, we can see that this is our salt or this is our, our thing that we're looking at. So what we're actually looking at is just this bit here because the sodium ion is not going to be an issue. It's this section that we need to look at. So if I go back down again, okay, what you need to do is to link the fact that this part of the salt, okay, uh, double bond, O bond, O minus, okay, so this part of the salt, if it finds any free hydrogen ions, will reassociate with those to form the molecular ion of the, of the acid, okay. So you can, if you wish, talk about 
conjugate bases. Okay, oh, sorry, let's put the hydrogen on there. Okay, but what we've done here, and is important, so this would get you kind of halfway there, but what you've now got to say is the hydrogen ion has actually come from the water equilibrium. Okay, and I'm all for drawing it out. So the water equilibrium, what's happened is you have taken hydrogen ions out of the water equilibrium, which means that the water equilibrium shifts to the right to replace those hydrogen ions. Now those hydrogen ions are replaced, but at the same time, no hydroxides had been removed. So all that happens to the hydroxide ion is that that concentration goes up. So overall, we end up with increased OH relative to H. So we have an alkali greater than seven. It's not the nicest, but I would genuinely try and give the equilibriums as diagrams. It, it makes it so much easier to talk about it. Um, and if you're trying to write a statement set down, you could also say uh, this is number one is happening here and label this. And therefore what's happening in the water equilibrium is two and therefore three, which gives you four. You know, so you can actually use these kind of as a system to work. OK, a lot of reading in the next one. After refluxing, dilute hydrochloric acid was added to the reaction mixture and a white precipitate of 4-hydroxybenzoic acid was produced. The crude 4-hydroxybenzoic acid was recrystallised. 4-hydroxybenzoic acid is soluble in different solvents, but only some of these solvents are suitable for recrystallization. State two factors that should be considered when selecting an appropriate solvent for this recrystallization. You will notice that I have just lifted the mark scheme for this. I just don't think there's a better list. Okay, you're just looking for any two of them. So if you're going to use it as a solvent, then obviously um, it has to work as a solution. It has to actually dissolve it. Um, but what's really essential is that it doesn't react with it, because otherwise you're going to have a problem with your thing you're trying to find. Okay, it has to be more soluble in the hot than the cold, so that when you cool it, it will actually recrystallize. Um, you cannot have your impurities being soluble because otherwise they end up still in the recrystallization. Uh, you might want to consider the boiling point because the boiling point is going to determine how well it works um, and what kit you can use. And polarity because that is the biggest factor you're looking at in terms of solubility. Okay, so that list is great. Use that list. Um, in this experiment, percentage yield was 77.5%. Calculate the mass of ethylparaben required to produce 2.48 grams of 4-hydroxybenzoic acid. It's worth two marks, which I think is quite nice, really. Okay, so we've got all the data we need. What we've been told is we have 2.48 grams. But what we're also told is that that is 77.5%. So what I need to know is if it had been... 100%, what would I have needed to make? Okay, so I'm going to take my 2.48 divided by 77.5 and times it by 100, and I get that what I needed to make in the 100% wise was 3.2 grams. Now, the reason I wanted to know that is because then I can just do a really simple proportion. Okay, what I know is that um, 138 grams here, okay, um, would be produced from 166 grams. So I'm like, right, okay, 3.2 grams, what would that give you? And you just do a straight proportion. So this one divided by this one times by that one gives me a total of 3.85 grams. Two marks, done. I don't think it was that bad. And end of question.